Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and with iOS 15 having been announced, I thought it was a good time to take another look at the current iPhone line and see which one is right for you if you're looking to buy. And have no fear if you're on a budget, we'll also be looking at some used options that go as cheap as $50. And best of all, they will all run iOS 15 when it launches in a few months. I'll have timestamps in the description if you want to skip ahead to what you're interested in, and make sure you check out my many reviews on iPhones from this year if you're wanting more info as we'll be trying to run through these pretty quickly. But without further ado, let's kick this off with the best of the best in the iPhone 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max. These phones are awesome and expensive, being $999 for the 12 Pro and $1099 for the 12 Pro Max. But it's June when I'm making this video, and who knows when you'll be watching it, so if you are in the situation where you're rolling in dough and want to blow it on the best iPhone, I very much strongly recommend waiting until the September or October when the next iPhone will inevitably come out. As always, it's going to bring new features and likely an updated design, and so you're not going to want to miss out. That being said, if you do end up buying a 12 Pro, I have no doubt in my mind that you'll absolutely love it, as uh, they're great phones. And then we've got the budget versions of the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max with the iPhone 12 and 12 Mini, coming in at 700 bucks for the Mini and 800 for the regular 12. The Mini is really hard for me to recommend for most people, as it's quite small, which isn't a design element most will like, but if you're one of the niche crowd who prefers compact devices, then it's literally the best smartphone on the market to suit your needs. Apple making a full flagship phone of this size and caliber is great, and it's unmatched by any other options out there. The regular 12 at 800 bucks is a decent deal, and I think the $200 saved from the iPhone 12 Pro is worth it. It's the same size as the 12 Pro, and even better, also has the OLED display, which means no downgrade in screen quality like we saw with the iPhone 11 and 10R in the past. For those looking to buy just a generally great phone right now, I do believe the iPhone 12 is the best option, as it'll likely still be around in Apple's lineup, even with their next iPhones coming out, and it's just solid value with few concessions from the Pro. The 12 is a great buy if you don't want to wait around for the next iPhone, and the 12 mini can also be solid if you really prefer small phones. The 11 Pro is not in Apple's lineup anymore, so we'll come back to that one after we finish with the iPhones they're currently selling, which brings us to the iPhone 11 coming in at $600. $600 for the iPhone 11 is an absolutely fantastic price point, and this is the phone I really recommend for the average person looking to pick up a new smartphone. It's fast, has the really great camera, it's big but not too big, and it's really not far removed from the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro in terms of what it's capable of. The 11 is a truly great deal, and the 200 bucks you save from the iPhone 12 is a pretty solid incentive. The only real downside is the lack of an OLED display, leaving you with the older Retina LCD screen, which for most people is going to be more than good enough and still looks fine, just not as vibrant or as sharp. If that's a concern for you, and you're more of a kind of techie type that wants a good screen, you can always go up to a better iPhone, but for most, the 11 is going to be the best value in Apple's lineup for the moment. The only thing I'll add to that is the iPhone 12 might be 200 bucks more, but it also has double the storage with 128 gigabytes versus 64 gigs on the $600 iPhone 11, so that might be worth the jump for you, but another option is going up to $650 for 128 gigs on the iPhone 11, and all of a sudden, you're still saving 150 bucks and getting the same amount of storage space, so that's a pretty good option as well. But if $600 is slightly too expensive for you, you can get a very similar experience with the iPhone XR at $500. It has different colors and is missing the ultra-wide camera of the 11, but otherwise looks about the same with the same display. The overall camera quality on both the front and back is worse than the 11 and is missing night mode, but if the camera is not a concern, the XR really isn't that far behind in tech specs and speeds and is pretty much just as capable as the 11, so that $100 saved might just just be worth it. The 10R is at a really good price, and while I do recommend the 11 over it, if you need to save the money, then that's totally fair, and I think you'll love the phone. My brother got one somewhat recently, and he's really enjoying it. Just works great for him. It's also worth mentioning that while I won't be going too in-depth here, the 11 and 10R can both be found cheaper, used or refurbished on, say, eBay, and because they've been around for a while now, it's definitely possible to find a good deal. Personally, I'd try to buy new, and you could always look around at carriers to see if they have sales, but I just wanted to throw that out there. And now we come to the the final iPhone Apple sells, the $400 second generation iPhone SE from 2020 that looks like the iPhone 8 with the speeds of the iPhone 11 thanks to the A13 chipset. Beside the home button and bezels, the biggest concession you're taking with this phone is the older camera, the sensor being the same as the one in the quite old at this point iPhone 8, although with a range of software improvements bringing it closer to on par with the iPhone XR for general quality. It also does have a newer chipset than the XR by a single generation, but even with that, for only $100 
100 bucks more, I'd be taking the 10R every time. I think the SE works for someone who really wants to keep the home button and doesn't need their phone too much or doesn't want their phone experience to change whatsoever from whatever they have right now. I mean, this phone looks like an iPhone 6 from 2014 from the front. It's also quite small and has pretty mediocre battery performance, even brand new. So while for someone who doesn't use their phone much, it'll last the day, that may not be the case forever as the phone ages and the battery inevitably degrades. I really love the SC and I'm glad Apple made it, but at 400 bucks, I just don't think it's a great value in comparison with the 10R or 11. So it does have its place in Apple's lineup for those who really want a home button, but for the vast majority, I'd point you to a better option for a way better battery and a bigger device. So with that, we've reached the end of all the iPhones Apple is currently selling. It's a really strong lineup right now with a phone and price point for nearly everyone. And I'll give a bit of a summary and conclusion right after we go through the phones for those who want to save some cash and buy used. For these phones, I'm going to be looking at ebay.com, so everything will be in American dollars. And I'd also recommend checking out local marketplaces on Craigslist and Facebook for potentially better deals. Also, a bit of a disclaimer here, buying used is always a risk. And so making sure you know the battery health of the phone and checking that the seller has positive feedback is kind of a must if you'd rather avoid being ripped off. When it comes to used phones, you never really know for sure what you're getting. And because of that, I do recommend buying new when possible. And uh, let's go ahead and get right into this with the most recently discontinued iPhones, the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. Both phones are absolutely still great, and them being discontinued certainly isn't indicative of their quality, but rather the opposite, as they're close enough to the 12 Pro that Apple doesn't want them directly competing against each other. The 11 Pro has the same camera and specs as the iPhone 11, but a much better OLED display, and one that's a bit smaller than the 11 on the regular 11 Pro at 5.8 inches versus the 6.1 inches on the 11 and 6.5 inches on the 11 Pro Max. Here I've got my iPhone 11, 10, and 11 Pro Max, and consider the 10 to be the stand-in for the smaller 11 Pro as it's the exact same size. What the 11 Pro brought from past OLED iPhones was an absolutely fantastic battery, assuming it's still at a good health. eBay.com gives me a cost of around $500, $600 for the 11 Pro, and then closer to $700 to $800 for the 11 Pro Max. I did see lower here and there, but the average seems to be around there, and I do think it's a bit too expensive given that the 12 costs about $800 brand new and has double the space of the base 64 gigabyte 11 Pro as well as being bigger than the default. If you find a deal for the 11 Pro, I have no doubt you'll love the phone. It's great. But I think for most, if you're paying this much anyway, you might as well go ahead and get that brand new device with the iPhone 12. Next, we've got the iPhone 10s and 10s Max. The 10s can be found from $300 to $400, whereas the 10s Max is more like $400 to $500, both being pretty fair prices given how great the phone still is. My biggest complaint is with the mediocre battery life, especially compared to the 10R, 11, and 11 Pro, but if you find one with a battery health above 90%, it should last you the day without too much trouble, depending on what you're using it for. And the 10S Max will also be a little bit better as it's bigger, though still not great. Besides the battery, the displays are absolutely gorgeous. The tech specs are fantastic, and the camera is still very much capable of taking great photos. This near three-year-old phone might be worth picking up if you find a deal, although like with the 11 Pro, I would say buying new with the iPhone 10R is probably a better idea, as at 500 bucks, it's not that much more, and the battery life jump is probably worth it. But if you're getting one of these for, say, $300, it's really hard to argue with that. Moving on, we have the iPhone 10, which only came in the smaller size, and at this point is already almost four years old, which is crazy hard to believe. Because of the four years, though, the battery in many of these devices will be degraded significantly, and they never held up so great in the first place. So I'd be wary of that. As a general rule of thumb, you don't want to get a phone with a battery health worse than about 85%, as once it gets to around and below 80, it's likely you could start experiencing slowdown or random shutdown issues. That being said, price-wise, the iPhone 10 can be an absolute steal if you look around. It's often around $250 to maybe $300, sometimes less, sometimes more, and with some searching, I have no doubt you could find something. It has a gorgeous display, and the tech specs still hold up no problems, so it's tough to argue the value, and if you go for it, I don't think you'll regret it. The iPhone 8 and 8 Plus came out the same year as the iPhone 10, as formerly the last home button iPhones, and the 8 Plus actually remains the last plus-sized home button iPhone, which does seem to give it a bit more demand than you would typically see from a four-year-old smartphone. The 8 Plus goes for a similar price as the iPhone 10 at around $200 to $250, which isn't bad, and besides the screen not being OLED, it's about the same as the 10 with even some advantages. The screen is technically smaller diagonally, but it's wider, which makes it feel bigger, and the battery on it, in my experience, is quite good thanks to the large physical size. If you're in the extremely niche group of people who want a large home button iPhone, the 8 Plus still holds up, and at 200 bucks with a decent battery health, I would say
say go for it. The smaller 8's a bit more difficult to judge. I'm finding it for around $150 to $200, which is honestly a really great price point. And we're already getting to the point where it's really hard to argue against the value of these phones. The problem is, as always, battery life, and I feel like a broken record at this point. So beyond that, iOS 15 is going to run no problem, and the phone holds up tech spec wise, even with that older design. The single camera is not great, and you can't take portrait mode photos with only the one lens on the back, and so it's kind of a mixed bag. But if you need to save some money and you're okay with the smaller size, the 8 is absolutely worth it if you can find it near that $150 price point. Then there's the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, the final fully aluminum iPhones. The 7 Plus seems to vary in price a lot, but it's commonly around $150 to $200, so about the same as the smaller iPhone 8, and I'd say it's probably worth it over the 8 purely for the better battery life. $150, if not cheaper, for the 7 Plus gets a double thumbs up from me when it comes to value. The smaller iPhone 7 gets us to a crazy cheap price point of under $150, often around even $100, which is a fantastic price for a phone as capable as the 7 can be. I'd still choose the 7 Plus over it for the portrait mode camera and much better battery, but it will run iOS 15, and for $100, it's really hard to complain. And moving quickly here, we've got the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, the oldest smartphones being supported on iOS 15. The 6S Plus tends to go for around and a bit over $100, which isn't really worth it in my opinion, as the 7 Plus isn't much more, and is definitely a better phone. The 6S, on the other hand, goes for under $100, which is insane. And I even saw some 16 gig models for like 60 bucks, although you should never, ever, ever buy a 16 gigabyte iPhone anymore under any circumstance whatsoever, ever. Trust me, it's not enough space anymore. The 6S is old, it really is at this point, and the battery life, even if it's healthy, is likely going to give you some trouble. But the performance doesn't lie, and on iOS 14, it's pretty solid, giving me confidence iOS 15 is going to be a similar experience. I do have iOS 15 beta on my 6S here, but it's a very early developer beta, so it's hard for me to properly judge how it runs, but I do really recommend at least going up to an iPhone 7 or better for a smoother experience. And last but not least, we come to the iPhone SE. No, not that one, the older first generation SE from 2016, which retains the classic iPhone 5 and 5S design, making it both very small and very wholesome. <laughs> the fact that this phone runs iOS 15 is an absolute miracle, and even better, it can be found for around $50, often more, but I wouldn't pay more than maybe $75 in good condition, just because that iPhone 7 is so cheap. The SE is essentially the 6S in a smaller shell with few differences, and the fact that a phone as old and as cheap as this can do practically anything the iPhone 12 Pro can do when it comes to at least the basics is absolutely bonkers. I don't recommend the SE, it's old and the battery life is going to suck, but it will do the job if you need it to, and if you're on an extreme budget or need a phone for someone who really doesn't want a phone or doesn't want to do much with it, then it's hard to complain thanks to the value. And you could always get a battery case as well. They're pretty cheap, especially for older iPhones because they've been around for so long and they can add like another day of life depending on what you get. And so with that, we've covered every iPhone running on iOS 15. And man, is there ever a lot of them. There were no devices dropped in support from iOS 14, which is insane. And so while I would say odds are at least pretty high that the first SE and 6S won't get iOS 16 in late 2022, who the heck knows at this point? You can't expect much from older devices, but if you're on a really tight budget, my favorite picks at the moment are probably the iPhone 7 for as low as $100, and even better, the 7 Plus for as low as $150. And even better than that, the 8 Plus at $200. The prices are also jumbled and close when you get to these older phones. You might as well just look around through even all of them and just find a deal you really like. Moving a tier up, I don't really consider the 11 Pro 10s or 10 to be really worth it right now if you had considered buying used, unless of course, as always, you find a deal. But the 10R stands at 500 bucks brand new, and that's probably not going to be that much more than you're already spending. So in my opinion, I would just go for the brand new phone and much better battery. Or in the 11 Pro's case, either the iPhone 12 or the 11. When it comes to Apple's current lineup, I have to go with the iPhone 11 for best value with the 10R not far behind, and then the 12 also being a great deal. The 11 just has nearly the perfect compromise in top of the line specs and camera held back by only a meh display that really isn't that bad, especially for those among us who don't know what OLED or LCD even means. The iPhone 12 at $800 is really darn solid, and if you want one of the best iPhones right now, I'd be looking at that one over the 12 Pro personally. Or even better, just wait a few months until the new wave of iPhones launch and then pick one up when the price drops or, you know, get one of the new iPhones. And so with that, that was my fairly quick, even though this video will be kind of long, and fairly thorough iPhone buying guide for, I guess, mid-2021. These are always fun to do, and I hope you found 
found it helpful. So if you did, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. And I will have links to many iPhone reviews in the description if you want to learn more. Thanks for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.